Okay, this is like actually insane. Like, what? <laughs> this powder? This powder? I already hate it. This is a powder. Are you kidding me? Very dry on my skin. I, I have seen what I needed to see. And that's just, just no. Look at this. This is the most magical powder I've ever used. Look at that. It is disgusting. It still feels and looks like skin. Don't walk, run, run to get the- Trust. <laughs> For weeks now, we've been talking about Lashgate. What was supposed to be a sponsored post for a mascara turned into a much larger conversation about undisclosed ads and false advertising. If you've grown up with the YouTube beauty community, you're probably used to certain expectations when it comes to beauty influencers. If a makeup influencer on YouTube would take too many sponsorships, especially for products they didn't necessarily love, those influencers would be seen as untrustworthy and people wouldn't be taking their future recommendations seriously. It's like what happened with Morphe. Morphe was paying a lot of these beauty gurus good money, so everyone was promoting them and shoving their discount code down people's throats. They were always talking about how the products were the best thing in the world and how great they were, only for their fans to go out, buy Morphe, and realize they weren't actually the best quality. Eventually, influencers who were constantly pushing Morphe were seen as sellouts, and they lost the trust of a lot of their audience. What we're seeing with this new generation of TikTok beauty influencers is literally 10 times worse than anything the YouTube gurus were doing. The beauty space on TikTok is filled with undisclosed ads, hidden partnerships, and really sneaky methods to avoid proper disclosure. I wanna thank L'Oreal so much for being such a special part of my party and helping me, you guys are the best. One of the most popular methods amongst the TikTokers for disclosure is hiding your affiliation with the brand behind your username. People really caught on to this when Michaela posted her mascara review. Disclosing that you're a partner with a brand in really small font that blends into the background hidden at the very bottom of your screen behind your username is not proper disclosure. And this problem isn't just with Michaela. So many creators on TikTok are also doing it as well. I've seen Glamzilla do it. This drugstore mascara actually works. It's by L'Oreal. It's their telescopic lift mascara. Let me show you it in action. And even Nikki tutorials. This powder? This powder? This right here is the Maybelline Super Stay 24 hour powder foundation. When I tell you this is gonna be my new personality for the next two months. And I will say, at least Nikki is putting the paid partnership banner on hers, but that's actually not enough. According to this article about FTC disclosures for online creators, this is what the FTC has to say about those little disclosure banners. Don't assume a platform's disclosure tool is good enough. Many social platforms, including Instagram, have introduced brand partnership labels for sponsored content. According to the FTC, however, these built-in tools might not be good enough. Their advice is to use these tools as well as your own clear and accurate disclosure. And as you guys know, Nikki has actually been called out time and time again for this stuff, especially during her YouTube days. She had to create her own disclosure system so people knew if a video was sponsored or not. You would think after being called out time and time again and doing all that work to fix it over on YouTube, you would set an example for the new generation on TikTok. Michaela and Nikki are super close too, so I'm not surprised that Michaela thought that she could get away with Lashgate when her friend, who's been in the game for a really long time, is getting away with very similar stuff. Even Tati recently talked about just how different the beauty space is when it comes to sponsorships on YouTube versus TikTok. But something you have to remember is back in the day, if anyone took a sponsorship that so much felt like even a little bit like maybe they don't really like this, like we got jumped, okay? Like it was brutal. It was not fun. I mean, you read it, guru gossip. Sometimes things would be written about you. You would take it from all different angles of the drama community, other influencers that didn't like what you were doing or what you were about. So there was a lot of push initially to break through to a place where influencers were actually like seen as okay to earn money. And it's a weird thing to have gone from this being an exclusive hobby to career. And I've seen the whole thing change and change again. Now we're in this era of short form content where bless it, you can make some money doing like a minute long sponsorship but we're all just kind of like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No one gives any pushback. So as much as I 
don't want to jump on that cancel culture train and like put someone down for doing what they're doing and being successful with it. I also think like there does need to be a flag raised of like be authentic. Do not lie. It makes us all look bad. So after Lashgate, I was just scrolling through some of Michaela's past sponsorships, and I noticed one very similar to her mascara one. A few days before Lashgate happened, Michaela did a sponsorship for Maybelline, promoting their new Superstay Hybrid Powder. The first thing that caught my eye was just how concealed her affiliation was. She wrote Maybelline Partner once again in white writing and completely hid it behind her username. I will say she did put that paid partnership banner up, but for all I know, she probably added that after Lashgate, and as we just talked about, that's actually not enough. Okay, this is like actually insane. Like, what? <laughs> it's literally just a powder foundation. <laughs> Look at the difference. <laughs> Look the way it covered all my redness like this. I have seen what I needed to see, okay? This is the most magical powder I've ever used. It's the Maybelline Superstay. It's it's new. It's 24 hour wear hybrid powder foundation. And it, it it feels like there is no powder on my face. It feels like nothing is on my skin. So I made sure my skin was really hydrated. I use a damp beauty blender because it actually melts the powder into the skin. It looks unreal under the eyes. Just this powder foundation. Yet it still looks like skin. And apparently it's water resistant and sweat proof. Let me just finish the face. It feels like there is no makeup on my face. I love it. <laughs> Maybelline Superstay 24 hour powder foundation. Trust. <laughs> so Michaela promotes this powder and it's no wonder this video went viral. This foundation is a powder foundation, yet on Michaela, it literally looks like a mask. Like it is super, super full coverage, not dry, not cakey. It looks great. But a lot of people weren't happy with how she filmed this video. People were saying the start of the video looks way different than the end result, and they thought it was kind of sketchy of her to cut the video every time she went to actually apply the product. Here's what people had to say. She definitely put foundation on during the cuts. Hmm, it doesn't really look like the same product at the end. I'd like to see these applied without any cuts in between because the left side didn't look the same coverage at all while you were applying it. So weird how it strategically cuts when you start applying it and then cuts back once you're done. But Michaela's fans completely sold out this foundation. You couldn't even find shades on the shelves for weeks. People were literally buying their wrong shade just so they could try it. After her fans actually got their hands on it and started to try it out, they realized they weren't getting those dramatic results that Michaela was getting. What did I do wrong? Michaela raved about this Maybelline Superstay powder foundation, and I actually already had it from the brand sending it to me a few weeks ago. So I tried it on this half of my face and I really don't know what I did wrong. It's supposed to be full coverage. Michaela said it looks great under your eyes. I prepped my skin with primer. I'm not sure what's up. Somebody help me, please. This video is now filled with fans asking what they're doing wrong, saying they wasted $16, and now they feel like the ad was a lie. Here's what people had to say. I bought this product based off your review, and it definitely does not offer that much coverage. I bought it, and it does not cover like that. You must be using a ton. I feel like this is also her faking it. I don't know. The video cut off as she was blending the powder in, and the powder was not giving a lot of coverage in the end. Hmm, doesn't really look like the same product at the end. Please tell me why other beauty influencers did not get this result. I bought this and no way, absolutely not, does it go on like you show. You are definitely doing something more. Now I feel I wasted $16. I listened to you and purchased, returning it tomorrow. Never tried anything that bad. I got one and it doesn't work like that. I tried this and it does not cover like this at all. I put like five coats on. I feel like you did more. I tried this and it definitely doesn't look like this full coverage. Just be aware that this product is not working for some, including myself. It does not give the full coverage like the video. I was so disappointed. It doesn't look like that on me. Bought it last night and it looks cakey and horrible. I bought this and I don't know. They might have given you a better formula to test because mine sure didn't cover my redness. Why does it not look like that on me? Paid collaboration says it all. I've tried it and it's not even close to this. 
bought it and tried and didn't even do a quarter of my face and tossed it. It's so drying and cakey looking, highlights every bit of texture you have. I bought this and it absolutely did not do that to my face. I just tried it and it absolutely sucks. Hardly any coverage and if you use more, it ends up being cakey AF. No way she only used the powder. Lies, it doesn't look or work like that at all. How did you apply this? Because I tried applying it the same method as you and it does not do that for me. It barely covers redness and it's cakey and flaky. Are we sure we didn't put this over the top of a liquid? I'm liking this, but I'm not getting this type of coverage. I love you, but I hate this product. I think it only works on nice skin to begin with. And look, I know not every product is going to work for every single person. I'm sure I could tell you guys some of my go-to foundations that I swear by, and some of you would be like, yeah, I tried that and it sucks. But when the response is this overwhelming with people not getting the same results as Michaela, when Michaela uses words like magic, when she hides her affiliation with the brand, it makes it seem like she just came across this life-changing product. Okay, this is like actually insane. This is the most magical powder I've ever used. It looks unreal under the eyes. Trust. <laughs> people are gonna be expecting a magical life-changing product. I decided to look up reviews online too because I just knew the Michaela fans would be under this video saying like, oh, it's just people hating on her. People are just saying they hate it just to be mean to her but it's really not. It currently only has a 2.6 star with people writing. Don't waste your money. This is the worst powder I have ever used and I've tried many. This was very drying, patchy, and separated on my face like you wouldn't even believe. It looked terrible right after the application and only looked worse throughout the day. I've tried brushes, beauty blenders, and sponges, and it applies horribly with them all. I saw this on TikTok and I was so excited to try it out, but joke's on me because it was absolutely awful. Do yourself a favor and just throw your money in the trash instead of buying this product. The liquid foundation is wonderful, but the powder is garbage. We'll never purchase again. Zero stars for sure. Don't listen to TikTok. I was really excited to try this powder due to TikTok and everyone saying it was God's gift to makeup, but it's really not. I have oily skin and it looked just so caked. I can't imagine it on dry skin. It's clung to weird spots and my smile lines peek through like 10 minutes after application. I tried multiple different ways to give it a fair shot. It just isn't it in my opinion. I am returning the product. Not quite sure if I got a defective product or what. It was dry even with a damp sponge. It looked dark in the package. I was afraid it would be too dark on my pale skin. I looked like I used chalk. I will be returning this not impressed. I guess I won't be taking advice from social media influencers anymore. I wimped out on TikTok and got it. Horrid, the issue of dryness cannot be expressed enough. It needs a disclaimer, do not use on dry skin. Even after serums and moisturizers, this is dry, shows every wrinkle. It's not even close to a proper skin color. It feels so heavy. I couldn't wait to get it off my skin. Maybe for some, not for me. I hate I spent the money. I saw this on TikTok like most others. I went and bought two shades with my own money. I was so excited and wanted to love it, but it's just not good. The coverage is not as good as it looked online. It looks like powder on the skin. It's just a no for me. Horrible. I was so excited to use this foundation due to seeing it on TikTok. I am so disappointed in the outcome. It barely will blend on my face and it's causing blotchy looking spots. I am embarrassed wearing this in public. I even went out myself and literally had to go on a scavenger hunt for this foundation. It was completely sold out everywhere and I ended up finding one left at Walmart. And let me tell you, I could not get this product off my face fast enough. It literally showed bumps that you didn't even know you had. It looked like chalk. The one thing I will say, I saw a lot of people accusing Michaela of using some sort of liquid foundation during the cuts, but I don't think that's the case. You really can get that kind of coverage with it, you just have to use a damp sponge and really dig into the pan. Like obviously, if you use a ton of product, you're gonna get a lot of coverage, but it's gonna feel gross and you're gonna waste product and money. Of course Michaela doesn't show that, she's just trying to make it look as great as possible and that's why you don't see her actually applying it from start to finish. It seems like I'm not the only one who got those results because a lot of unsponsored reviews on TikTok are starting to surface and people aren't loving it. 
we're doing dabbing on the skin. Everyone says dab, don't rub. I always dab to just kind of lightly tap it in, lightly press it in. How are we looking? Can we go over that blemish? Oh no, that might've been what did it. I feel like as soon as I went under the eyes, things got a little rough. Okay, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So there are definitely some spots where it doesn't look good. Like around here, I can see some powderiness. On my nose, things are happening. And like when I try to blend it, like nothing happens. Like I can't get it to go away. Um, I brought it up under my eyes. Overall, much better than the first time. However, like this just isn't my look. Like I don't like looking powdery. I feel like worried about how it's gonna turn out. I wasn't gonna buy this, I really wasn't. I thought it was gonna be much too dark for me, but then I saw Michaela's rave review video and we're usually the same skin tone, so here we are, let's give it a try. I'm going to be putting it in comparison to my MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation. Having zoomed in, hopefully you're able to see what I mean where the redness is peeking through here in a way that it isn't so much on this side. And as I said, that could either just be that the Maybelline does have less coverage or that it is just a lighter shade. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm seeing on camera in person, but the Maybelline is very dry on my skin. I prep my skin the same way. I am having a dry skin day. And at first when I was putting it on, I was like, oh, Okay, and then my idea was just to sit, put like setting spray all over it, okay? I'm just feeling like that was like, I don't even normally like know my lines are here and I just feel like that was like instantly aged. Do not, and I repeat, do not buy this foundation. I know it's viral on TikTok, but it sucks. Don't do it, it's not worth the $16. All right, oh, real quick, a little reveal. We've got before versus after. So I did about a 15 minute face today. Let's zoom it in and see how she's looking. Because I'm doing a wear test today as well, I'm not gonna spend too much time here, but I wanted you guys to be able to see the texture and everything up close. I don't hate it, but I also don't love it yet either. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and do the day and I'll be right back, hold on. All right, so in one word, no. Just so much breakage everywhere. I mean, as you can tell, the texture never got better and I was an oil slick all day. So I've just seen Michaela's video of the Maybelline Super Stay Powder Foundation. I ran to Boots the following day. I saw it last night, I ran there this morning, I bought it, and you know what, if truth be told, this is all fake, I'm in a foul mood. So far, it's not cute. I'm gonna be real with you, fully transparent. I'm not a Maybelline partner, but initially, look at them pores. So I'm not sure how they've done it so they've got this like full coverage moment. I'm really like caking the product on, and she just streaked it on perfectly like this. I don't know, maybe, I just feel like this is so excessive and such a waste. This was 12 pounds, by the way, so it wasn't like super cheap. Um, yeah, can you see this? Like, I'm under big lighting. Like, I've got a Hollywood mirror and two ring lights outside me right now. Can you see like these pores? It looks so textured and horrible. At this point, I'm even side eyeing Nikki Tutorials. She did a sponsored post for this foundation, and just like Michaela, the disclosure is hidden behind her username, and of course, she loved it so much. Being the full coverage addict that I am. This powder? This powder? This right here is the Maybelline Super Stay 24 hour powder foundation. When I tell you this is gonna be my new personality for the next two months. So just like Michaela, I'm picking it up on a damp sponge to really melt the powder into the skin. This is a powder, are you kidding me? Don't walk, run, run to get the, I'm, I mean, look at it. Maybelline 24 hour super safe powder foundation. She's that girl. Maybelline has been that girl and will continue to be that girl. I'm obsessed. And people are calling Nikki out too, writing, notice how she cuts just like Michaela and the product drastically changes just like Michaela. Not worth the buy. I bought it and it makes my pores look awful. Unless it's my primer underneath, not worth the money. And honestly, I just find this whole thing so sad. There was a day when doing constant paid partnerships was considered a bad thing. Maybe it's the format on TikTok, but so many people overlook the fact that a lot of the videos they're watching are actually ads, and then they get upset when they don't get the same amazing results. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with doing a paid partnership, but it should be with products you actually love and believe in. 
I remember there was a time when viewers would actually be happy for creators getting these brand deals with companies that they knew they loved and had used before, and that's how it should be. Not accepting any and all deals from brands for some product that you've never tried before and having to post the most obvious fake review ever. It makes viewers lose trust in all creators and we start to think that all reviews are going to be dishonest. There are good creators out there who still only promote products that they love and accept sponsorships from brands they truly believe in. Unfortunately, with the rise of TikTok, it's become way too easy to disguise a sponsored video. And with short form content, you can quickly cut away and come back with some amazing result and no one questions it. This is just another example of why you should question everything you see online and actually do your own research before trusting a viral review. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below and I'll see you next time.